Hello all, welcome back to Current Affairs Hitler series. I'm Guna Madhivanan, Current Affairs faculty from Officers IAS Academy. So in this video, we are going to discuss our next Hitler's topic that is regarding avian influenza. Friends, before understanding avian influenza, let me explain about virus. So virus is an infective agent which contains a genetic material. It can be DNA or RNA. Right. So, virus is an infective agent. It is an infective agent which contains either DNA or RNA. And this is surrounded by a protein layer. It is surrounded by protein layer. This is virus. Now, it is of multiple types. So, briefly we will look at the types. So, virus can be divided into influenza virus, influenza virus, it can be divided into coronavirus and there are other types as well. See this coronavirus can be further divided into many. For example, we have uh, SARS coronavirus we have MERS coronavirus and we have our 2019 SARS COVID-2. These are different types of coronavirus, right? SARS refers to severe acute respiratory syndrome. MERS, Middle East respiratory syndrome. All these are types of coronavirus. In 2019, what we experienced is SARS coronavirus 2. Now, our interest is to know about influenza virus. So we will focus on influenza. This influenza virus can be further divided into type A influenza virus, type B influenza virus, type C, it goes on. So influenza virus, why it got its name as influenza? It causes flu-like diseases. It is of multiple types, type A, type B and it goes on. This type A virus can be further, it can be further divided into different types of viruses based on the type of protein layer found in that virus. Type of protein substances found in that virus. See particularly two types of proteins, one is called as H another one is called as N. H refers to hemagglutinin, N refers to neuraminidase. Don't try to remember that exact name. Just understand that when a virus, what did I say? A virus is an infective agent which contains a genetic material. It can be DNA or RNA. It is surrounded by a protein layer. So in the surface of this virus, you can find different types of proteins. You can find different types of protein. Now, based on the type of protein, based on the type of protein, we can classify the virus. If this virus has H type N type protein, for example, this has H type, it also has some N type, it also has some N type. There are multiple types of protein. I am saying if a virus contains H type, N type of protein, then we will say it is a type A influenza virus. So let's say you are giving your blood sample. You want me to check what virus infection is there in your blood sample. So using your blood sample, I make use of the electron microscope. I find out what virus is found in your blood sample. To know what virus, what I will do? I will check the protein layer. If the protein layer contains H type of protein and the N type of protein, then I will call that virus as a type A influenza virus. And here, even this H type of protein is of multiple types. We have 18 types of H protein. We have similarly 11 types of N protein. Even the H protein is divided into 18 types and the N protein into 11 types. So this H protein, so I will find out when I 
uh, when I want to find the exact virus type, I will find out which type of protein, okay, it says H1 and which type of N, it says N1. Then I will call this virus as H1 N1 type A influenza virus, that's all. H1 N1 type A influenza virus. So, I assume that I have uh, H10 and uh, N10 protein. Then how I will name this? I will simply name it as H10 N10 type A, H10 N10 type A influenza virus. That is all. Simple. If I, if I see H10 N10, I will name it as H10 N10 virus. If I see H1 N1, I will name it as H1 N1 virus. So, here we would have frequently heard about this H1N1, H1N1 influenza. So, what is this H1N1? This H1N1 is generally called as swine flu. It is called as swine flu or it is also called as Spanish flu or it is also called as Spanish flu. Why it is called as Spanish flu? So, in the First World War, Spain, many European countries, they saw an outbreak of this H1N1 virus. However, many countries were engaged in war. They were not focusing on reporting about these virus cases. But it was Spain, which was not a party to the war. They reported the outbreak. So, hence, this flu was referred as Spanish flu. Okay, it is also called as swine flu. Now, we are more interested to know about another type of virus which is called as H5N1, which is called as H5N1 virus. So, what is this H5N1? This H5N1 virus is referred as avian influenza. Avian influenza. It is also called as bird flu is also called as bird flu, avian influenza or bird flu. So, this H5N1 virus from the wild birds, particularly from the wild aquatic birds, it will infect the domestic poultry. It will infect the domestic poultry, chicken, right, duck, it will infect the domestic poultry. and when we come in contact with this poultry, so generally this H5N1, it will be infecting birds. It will be infecting birds. But when we come, when humans, when humans come in close contact with this domestic poultry, I am eating the infected chicken. If I cook it properly, okay. But when I eat the infected chicken or when I am working in the poultry farm, somehow I am coming in close contact with the infected bird then it can affect humans also. Generally, generally H5N1 will not infect humans. It will infect the domestic poultry. But when we come in close contact with the domestic poultry, then we can also be affected. It is highly fatal. It is highly fatal. Very risky. In 2022, in 2022, more than 60 plus countries witnessed outbreak of this H5N1. Almost 13 crore birds, 13 crore poultry, 13 crore chicken, duck, the domestic poultry where either it died, it lost its life because of the H5N1 infection or we destroyed it. Right? We destroyed it. So, almost 13 crore birds were facing death either because of the severe infection or we were destroying it, right? So, this is the impact of H5N1 because you see, if you are not doing it, then what happens? That, that is going to infect the humans, that is going to cause a huge crisis. So, now why we are discussing about H5N1 in detail? Recently, WHO has come up with a report, what this World Health Organization has mentioned. So, World Health Organization, WHO, it gave a report that this H5N1 virus 
is also infecting the mammals. It is infecting the dogs, cats, cows. Friends, humans, not, not everyone is going to come in close contact with the domestic poultry. But we see a lot of humans having pet animals. They come in more contact with the mammals than the birds. Many of them are in more contact with the mammals rather than birds. So now we see increased infection on mammals. This increased infection of mammals is posing a huge threat for humans. Right? So this has to be curtailed. We need a coordinated effort to curb this emerging pandemic. This could be, this has, this has a potential to become a pandemic. It can have a worldwide impact. It can become next to Corona also or even severe than that. So what we need is a coordinated global effort. WHO is calling for that. That is why it was in news. So pretty simply HYN1 will actually infect this, this influenza virus will actually infect birds. But when humans come in close contact with birds, we will be affected. Now what happens? This H5N1 virus is affecting the birds. From the birds, it is affecting the mammals. And when humans come in close contact with mammals, humans will be affected. When compared to birds, humans are coming in more contact with the mammals. So it is a huge emerging threat for humans. So we need an immediate action to prevent such pandemic. Right, I hope the video was uh, useful. So, so here I have given the information slides regarding avian influenza. You can pass the slide and you can go through. Right, so here I have given a multiple choice question. Find out the right answer and give it in the comment section. So see you tomorrow with another important video. Till then, bye, take care.